Borg, deeply kisses the skull in his hand, which belonged to his wife who has been dead for years. Before every big fight, he would pray in this way for his wife to bless him and grant him victory. At this moment, Ragnar did not believe that Rollo would betray him, as he saw no reason for Rollo to do so. However, Floki told him that betrayal does not require a reason, and he hoped Ragnar would be prepared. This war was a civil war caused by the Vikings fighting for territory. At this moment, Floki pointed out the approaching party to Ragnar, indicating that the traitors have arrived. And Ragnar also saw Rollo with Borg. The battle was imminent, with Ragnar representing King Horik, and Rollo standing with Earl Borg. Ragnar was deeply disappointed in his brother, as he did not expect Rollo to genuinely betray him. Shield ball! Shield ball! Spears! John! The two parties quickly rushed together, and the shield wall became a solid barrier for both sides. Any warrior who attempted to leap over the shield wall met with fatal attacks. As the fighting intensified, the two sides reached a stalemate. This war was about not just family honor, but also personal grievances. Rollo leaped over the shield wall, waving his giant axe, attempting to change the tide of the battle. <laughs> However, Floki felt deeply angry at Rollo's betrayal. When he saw Rollo, he rushed towards him, but the disparity in strength made it almost impossible for him to fight back. With Borg's aid, Rollo managed to break Floki's arm. Just at this moment, Ragnar and One-Eye arrived in the nick of time. Ragnar took Floki off the battlefield, while One-Eye confronted Rollo. In the confrontation with Rollo, One-Eye, though brave, was no match for Rollo. Facing One-Eye, Rollo laid down his weapon. But when faced with Rollo, who has betrayed them, One-Eye knows that he is no match for him and still keeps on attacking. Eventually he was pierced through the body by Rollo. <laughs> Seeing this, Ragnar is pained beyond words and kills his way out to Rollo. He confronted Rollo, asking if this was the outcome he had desired. Facing this question, Rollo had no answer. His lance in hand, probing again and again, was hesitant to strike. Perhaps he realized his mistake, or was unwilling to attack his brother again. In the end, he dropped his weapon and knelt on one knee. I gotta fight you. After the battle, Borg led his men to King Horik's camp. Horik offers to give up a third of the proceeds of the land to avoid more deaths. However, Borg declined such a reconciliatory offer, preferring to choose war over accepting such a distribution. At this moment, Ragnar stood up and approached both men. He expressed his confusion as to why they would incite a civil war over a piece of land. They could just raid west together, preventing infighting and mutual slaughter. They can also allocate land to their tribesmen for them to cultivate. Upon hearing Ragnar's words, both parties finally reached a ceasefire agreement and decided to raid the west together. Subsequently, Ragnar informed Rolf that Gaida had died. Ragnar led the team back to Kattegat. Because one eye died, Floki was seriously injured, and there was betrayal between brothers, everyone felt very heavy. Although the tribe's welcome ceremony was held, the morale of the team remained low. At this moment, another conflict was on the verge of erupting. Bjorn informed Lager though about the affair between Ragnar and Aslog. Lager the confronts Ragnar about who Aslog is. Immediately, she launched into an angry attack on Ragnar. 
<laughs> he tells Lagertha that he does not love a slog, and that he will never see a slog again if Lagertha will forgive him. Subsequently, Ragnar discussed Rollo's situation with his son. Even though Ragnar has become a count, he is unable to put his brother Rollo on trial because the law does not allow it. Rollo's fate would be decided by lawgiver at the assembly. At the same time, Bjorn became interested in the English gold coins in his hand and asked about their value. Ragnar, however, just responded with a smile. The next day, amidst a mass of abuse, Rollo was brought before the lawgiver. Having betrayed Ragnar and murdered their brother one eye, people were eager for him to be punished. However, the verdict announced by the lawgiver stirred public outrage. He stated that if the gods wished for Rollo's death, he would have died on the battlefield already. Therefore, they should abide by the gods' will and set Rollo free. Consequently, Rollo was released. This verdict sparked public outrage, and everyone hoped Ragnar would execute Rollo himself. However, Ragnar stated that they must respect the authority of the lawgiver. After eyeing the gold coin in his hand, the lawgiver departed satisfied. In the following days, the situation within the tribe gradually calmed down. Rollo sought out Ragnar, conceding his mistakes, admitting his actions were all to break free from Ragnar's shadow. But when I stepped out of it, there was... there was no sunlight. No sunlight at all. Back home, Rollo planned to pack his bags and leave, but Siggy persuaded him to stay. Siggy advised Rollo to face his problems, not run from them, and prove his worth again. As winter approaches, a ship appears in the Cadgate Channel with what turns out to be a pregnant aslog on board. Ragnar hurries back and tries to explain the situation to Lagertha, but it all seems too late. A slog arrived at Ragnar's doorstep with her guards in tow. Still, Lagertha prepared a welcoming feast for a slog. What about your parents? Hmm. They were just farmers. Surely nobody is just a farmer? Believe me, princess. It is exactly what some people are and are happy to be. Forgive me. After the feast was over, Bjorn rebuked Ragnar. But Ragnar is helpless, because a slog is pregnant with his child. Lagertha suspects that the baby may not be Ragnar's, but there's nothing she can do about it. Ragnar yearned for a son, whereas Lagertha was in a state of confusion, uncertain of what to do. After talking with his son, Ragnar, and he went to visit Floki together. Following a period of rest, Floki gradually recovered. Ragnar is happy about this and prepares a feast for Floki. At the feast, Ragnar proposed a shocking suggestion. He proposed to Lagertha to let a slog join their family. However, this suggestion was an insult to Lagertha, who couldn't tolerate sharing her husband with another woman. The next day, Lagertha packed up to leave, and Bjorn decided to stay with his father. Ragnar rushes after Lagertha when he learns of her departure, but fails to change her decision. Eventually, Bjorn chose to leave with his mother, leaving Ragnar to face everything alone. For years flew by, and Ragnar's life continued to be unruly. And a slog has given him two sons, and is still pregnant. Ragnar cared greatly for his son's futures and sought prophecies from the seer. The seer told him that one son would marry the daughter of a king, and the other would surpass his achievements and explore unknown seas. Bjorn was one of them, and the seer said nothing more. For years had significantly improved Floki's shipbuilding skills, and he built a formidable fleet for Ragnar. However, Ragnar lingered in issuing a marching order, which began to worry everyone about whether he had forgotten his original intentions. After four years of recuperation, life in the territory gradually recovered. Ragnar felt that it was a good time to embark on new adventures. So he announced plans for a summer expedition westward, and he even planned to establish quarters in England, to better understand the land. Upon hearing this plan, Siggy immediately sought out the now decadent Rollo. She knew that this was a good opportunity for Rollo to start over. But over the past four years, Rollo has lost his will to fight, and he lives a goalless life day in and day out. But Siggy didn't give up on him, and eventually made Rollo regain his fighting spirit through various means. I'm giving you a choice, Rollo. Go and speak with your brother. Take this blade. Push it into your ribs right now. Stay in hell for all eternity.
Rollo even sought out Ragnar on his own, hoping he could trust him again. Rollo hoped that Ragnar would let him go to the west with him, but Ragnar told him that he needed to think about it. King Horik and Earl Bord learned of Ragnar's western expedition plan and rushed over with their troops. The two leaders were still harboring grievances from previous disputes. To ease the tension, Ragnar summoned Rollo and told everyone he planned to accept Rollo back but Rollo would not take part in this expedition. Subsequently, Ragnar hosted a grand feast to entertain everyone. At the banquet, Horik quietly told Ragnar he did not trust Borg. He advised Ragnar not to include Borg in this expedition, putting Ragnar in a difficult position. The next day, Horik showcased his fleet to Ragnar. Impressed by this, Ragnar decided to choose a strong ally and abandon Earl Borg. Ragnar finds Borg and tells him that he can't take him with him on this ocean trip. Borg hears this and leaves in a huff, not giving Ragnar a chance to explain himself. And Siggy finds Horik, claiming that she knows Ragnar's weakness. Meanwhile, Rollo received a guest, who turned out to be the discarded Earl Borg. Borg tries to turn Rollo, but Rollo is not his old self and refuses to betray his brother. Subsequently, Ragnar bid a reluctant farewell to his family, ready to set sail. After four years of preparation, the fleet for the Western Expedition finally set sail. This was the largest expedition to date, boasting 12 warships. They sailed magnificently out of the Kattegat Strait. Everything was going according to plan, but after a long voyage, land still hadn't appeared. They had no choice but to release the ravens to scout once more. However, before hearing news from the ravens, Ragnar encountered a storm. Ragnar, who was just mocking Horik, noticed in the next second that the sail was about to tear. Ragnar spotted it in time, they lowered the sail, avoiding disaster. As soon as they lowered the sail, a bigger crisis reoccurred. A huge reef stood in front of them, causing everyone to look ahead in alarm. The sound of waves hitting rocks! Luckily for Ragnar, he has a reliable group of brothers, and they once again escape the ocean's prey. However, others were not so fortunate. Ragnar looked back and realized only five ships remained. They not only suffered heavy losses but also strayed off course. Just as everyone began to despair, a miracle occurred. Father! Father, come see! Even though it was an unknown land, they were exhausted. So they could only choose to explore this uncharted territory first. Their landing had already been spotted by the guards on the shore. But Ragnar and his men were oblivious to it. After a long and bumpy ride, everyone was exhausted. Ragnar led everyone to rest by the river. Just as everyone lowered their guard, a new crisis approached quietly. An arrow suddenly shattered the tranquility, killing Horik's son. Then, countless arrows were shot at them. Ragnar immediately recognized it was an ambush and organized a quick defense. Everyone quickly formed a shield wall and withstood the attack. But soon, enemy infantry began mounting an attack from all directions. The two sides started a close battle. During this time, Athelstan saved Ragnar's life at a critical moment. Under the protection of the strong shield formation, the Vikings successfully won the battle. After the fight, Ragnar praised Athelstan's bravery and gave him the arm ring signifying Viking warriors. Then, they began interrogating two captives. From the interrogations, they learned that this was still part of England, but it was not in the territory of the Kingdom of Northumbria, it was the Kingdom of Wessex. The king here is Ekbert, a prominent figure in English history, much like Ragnar is among the Vikings. He had studied these invaders from the north in advance, knowing they would come, but didn't expect them to come so soon. 
The building in front of Ragnar is the famous Winchester Cathedral. Athelstan told Ragnar that this is a great place of pilgrimage. For the Vikings, seeing a cathedral was like seeing booty. So, they decided to proceed without hesitation. However, they were spotted by the monks in the bell tower after only a few steps. The monks immediately sounded the alarm, obviously they already knew about the atrocities of the Vikings. Upon hearing the alarm, they quickly retreated into the cathedral, hiding all their treasures. The soldiers here also rapidly assembled, preparing for a fight with the Vikings. Please subscribe to my channel. Share different movies and videos every day.